Hey everyone, it's Ben. I'm doing this video a little bit different. Um, for the first time, you guys can see me. And uh, I'm here today to talk about the Friday Night Remake, which I saw yesterday. Wife and I saw it yesterday. And uh, just thought I'd share a little bit about how I felt about the film. And uh, this was uh, a movie that I had a big problem with um, at first when I heard about it, because you cannot redo Friday Night in my opinion. That was the opinion I had, even prior to seeing the trailer or anything. It was just like a remake that was completely unnecessary. Like, why would you remake Friday Night? Um, you know, I understood some of these other ones. I always had a problem with Nightmare on Elm Street as well. That was one that I thought failed in a lot of ways. Um, didn't hate the movie, but just didn't think it was necessary. You can't top Robert Englund as much as Jackie O'Haley is a good actor. Nothing will ever top the original. Um, the only remake that I love with all my heart is the, the Friday the 13th remake, which wasn't a remake, it was like a reboot, but they took elements from the other films and made a new story, which I thought was very clever instead of trying to remake the first one, because you obviously can't redo Betsy Palmer's amazing performance. So going into this one, to Friday Night, like how are you going to top Stephen Jeffries as Evil Dead? How are you going to top Peter Vincent, played by the great, the late Ronnie McDowell? Um, so went into it and I was happy that I enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, I loved the film, um, something I didn't think I would say, um, talking to you guys. And this is coming from a hardcore original Fright Night lover. Um, loved the original, loved the sequel. Um, did not think they could do it without the original cast or Tom Holland, um, but Craig Gillespie surprised the heck out of me by directing a kick-ass movie. Colin Farrell was amazing as Jerry Dandridge. He brought a completely different presence as Jerry Dandridge. He was more of a, kind of a, he was like, I mean, they describe him as a shark in the movie, and he is more of a shark type character. Jerry, in the, played by Chris Sarandon in the original, had a very um, kind of emotional performance. As much as he was a vampire, he was also someone that you could tell that was lonely and there was a lot of vulnerability to him. Um, there's none of that in Farrell. Colin Farrell is Jerry Dandridge. Um, also, Anton Yelchin as Charlie Brewster was great. Loved him. Did a great job. Very boy next door. Played it very well. Played him very differently than William Ragsdale, um, which was great. I mean, he made it his own. He didn't try to copy anything William did in the original. Um, the big one for me was, I always forget his name, or how to pronounce it, Christopher Mintz Passe, I think is how you say his name. Well, anyway, McLovin from the Super Bad, who played uh, Evil Ed, that was going to be the toughest one for me because no one can replace Stephen Jeffries. And while he didn't replace Stephen Jeffries for me or over or do the character of Evil Ed better, he made it his own. Perfect. Did a good job. He didn't bug me. And I also like that they changed up some of the elements about. I don't want to go into any spoilers because I want people to go out and see this movie. Um, but they changed some of the dynamics about how Jerry is discovered as being a vampire. Um, and also there's different relationships between Charlie and his mother and just like the whole locale of it being in Nevada and being very isolated because it is a town where people work at night and they sleep during the day so that element is pretty prevalent throughout the film. Um, also thought that David Tennant was great as Peter Vincent, completely different from Peter Vincent but the Chris Angel approach really worked well and uh, I give it to the actors, they did a great job in this film. Um, the 3D was actually really good too. They played to the film's, you know, strengths. I mean, there's a lot of like uh, scenes where things were exploding and there was embers and things like that and they just did a really good job. Very gory as well. Very gory film. It wasn't really scary, it was more shock scares, but very gory. And that was great. And um, I mean, I give the film a 10. I loved it. Like I said, it's my favorite remake after the Friday the 13th reboot. They did a great job. I hope that word of mouth will help the film do better because it did kind of weak this perform uh, this box office performance weekend. I'm um, only making just under nine million, which is a shock. I'm just so sick of Twilight and things like that. It was nice to see a vampire movie of old. It felt like a vampire movie I grew up on. I'm tired of everything being True Blood and Twilight. I like True Blood a lot. Twilight I'm so sick of hearing about, and I'm just sick of that being what everybody focuses on now with vampire films. It has to be this brooding vampire romance thing, and it's just like, it, it's enough. Enough of it. Bring back the old vampires. Bring back movies like 30 Days a Night and Fright Night and Lost Boys. 
those are the ones I want to see. So get out there and spread the word, guys. I mean, to come from a guy that loved the original Friday Night and was so skeptical about a remake, I'm telling you, it was fun. I had a great time. It was well worth it. Go see it in 3D. It was a great film. So I give it 10 out of 10. Um, I know I haven't done my review of Friday Night 2 yet, but that will be coming. Um, tell me if you guys like this new format where I'm kind of just standing here talking about things or if you prefer where I got things that I'm showing. I really don't have nothing to show because the movie's not out on DVD yet and I don't really have any swag from it. So this is just something new I'm trying. I uh, appreciate all the kind comments and look forward to more videos from me. Thanks a lot, guys.